G'day people, I'm Sharon, welcome to my channel. Today I'm thanking Susan, who has allowed me to use her Janome My Style 20 to film how the machine is threaded and how it's used. To wind a bobbin on the My Style 20, you have two spool pin holders. So these spindles can hold your thread. Be gentle with them. When they get old, these pieces here are plastic and they disintegrate. This one's just had a new one put in. Put your thread on top of there and go firmly around the bit that looks like it's got a screw in it. That's what creates tension when you're winding a bobbin. Take this end of the thread, double it and give it a twist and that will make that piece of thread much stiffer which allows you to push it from the inside to the outside of a bobbin. Pull it through and put it onto the spool pin there. At the moment, if I run the machine, this is going to go up and down and this is not going to turn. By pulling the center out of the flywheel, it disengages this, but it's still not going to turn this until I move it over. Hold the thread above the bobbin and press the foot. Once it's gone a couple of times up and down here, cut this off close to the bobbin. Don't leave a quarter of an inch or six millimeters hanging out. You want to actually cut it off close to the bobbin and then wind. When you have wound your bobbin, cut it off in here. Over to the left and lift it off. Hopefully you can see there, it's a nicely wound bobbin, it's nice and firm, there's no loopy bits happening in it. But if while you were winding that, you ended up with loopy bits happening, usually it would mean that you didn't have it properly in here, you don't need to throw this thread away. Take it off here, put it on there, go through and wind it onto a different bobbin if it hasn't wound on well. To thread the main body of the machine, I am going to put that down on there. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. Here is the indication. I need to go under that. Don't go through this. That's only for bobbins. Go under here. And I pulled it all the way through. I'm holding on to this while I go down to the arrow and up and around. Except that that didn't connect to anything. It needs to connect over here. And to do that, I'm going to push the piece in, in the flywheel. And now I can turn this until I get the take-up lever to the top. The take-up lever being at the top is actually really, really super important. That means that the machine has finished its stitch so I'm holding this, going in there and around, and it's now caught in there. When the take-up lever was down, I couldn't get it to catch into it. The thread came from here, down, up, around the take-up lever. You can tell it's in because it's sitting there and pulling out at the top. Comes back down here. There's a little guide just there. And then we need to go through the needle from the front to the back. If the needle is incorrectly, there is a groove running down the front of the needle. If the groove is at the back, you've got your needle in back to front. The thread goes through the eye of the needle from the front to the back. I'm going to take the cover off. Is my bobbin it's like a letter P I have the thread coming down to the left it goes in here that way so that it's turning anti-clockwise put a finger on top 
bring the thread down to about four o'clock and then go around and back up. The cover slides in. If you then hold your needle thread while you wind all the way down and take take up lever back up to the top you'll bring your bobbin thread up these are the controls on the my style 20 on the side you have a wheel that will move you from stitch to stitch Stitch length is an indicator of how far along the feed dogs are going to pull your fabric with every stitch. The bigger the number, the bigger the amount that it will move the fabric along. The smaller the number, the smaller the stitch. Generally, we want to sew with a stitch that's probably fairly close to three. That's a nice, comfortable stitch length to have. If you're much shorter than that and you have to take it undone, it gets really obnoxious to take undone. If you go very much bigger than that, it can sometimes pull out. So on the whole, somewhere between two and three quarters and three usually works fairly well. I do use longer stitch lengths if I'm doing hems on stretchy fabrics because that gives me a bit more give. This is the length. When it is set to zero, the machine will not move the fabric forward. As you get a bigger and bigger number you'll get further and further so a bigger stitch length as you go I usually stitch with it somewhere between two and three closer to three stitch width is how far the needle deviates from side to side so in a zigzag it's how wide that is going to be it doesn't have anything to do with how long it's going to be. That is determined by the stitch length and what the feed dogs are doing. So it's the deflection of the needle side to side that's the width. Stitch width, if it's set to five, that's as wide as this machine can stitch. A zero is a straight stitch. If you have no width, you don't have any deviation side to side in a zigzag or anything else so you can see the stitches here at the top but there are a set of stitches here at the bottom as well in this case they're in pink and hopefully you can also see in pink there's a thing here that says stretch stitch with the my style 20 threaded and set to a straight stitch here I would normally be sewing with the length somewhere towards three and the width on zero. And the reason I have the width on zero is that that puts the needle into the center position, which is where the markings on the foot plate apply. So if I wanted to do a five eighths inch seam, I would put the edge of the fabric on the five eighths and so and keep it on that line make sure you take the take up lever all the way to the top lift the foot and pull the thread to the back there's a cutter on the left side so there's my stitching I caught a bit of the thread in the front front and back there's the tiniest little bit of red showing through on the back, tiniest little bit of blue showing through on the front. So that's a nice tensioned seam. I'm going to do the same thing again, just running down next to that last lot of thread. And this time I'm going to use the reverse key. So as I'm sewing along, I will press that. As long as I'm holding it in, the machine will go in reverse. When I let go, it'll go forward again. Reversing is one of the things that goes wrong on older machines. If you need to, check out 
the video I've got linked up there, which is about what to do if you're having some trouble with your reverse key. To do a zigzag, I need to move the little red marker in here to the right. I do that by turning it down towards myself. These machines, you can't go around the end and back to the other end. You have to go backwards and forwards this way. So I'm now on zigzag. I'll put my length down to two and my width up to two. Take up lever to the top and pull the fabric to the back. I can move along and just do each of these stitches. They won't have any width unless I've got some width here. I'm now looking at the stitch for the blind hem stitch. I don't have a book for this, so I'm not sure what width the machine would ask you, the information book would ask you to put it in. Probably wider than that. I went up to about four. That's probably a good width. And the reason you want it up that high is so that the difference between the big bite to the left and the other ones is quite pronounced. This, it will be very hard to get your blind hem foot set up on. I'm going to go over here now for the decorative stitches. We'll go to the end one. Little scallops. These sorts of stitches you need to have the width quite wide. The length needs to be in this area where the buttonhole is indicated and usually towards the bottom of that. not a bad decorative stitch. If the stitch length was a little bit lower then they would be closer together. I have drawn a buttonhole shape on here so the two ends and the line in the middle. I'm going to put the buttonhole foot on and it has a J on it. I know it's very hard to see here there is a J in there. With all cases, Janome's feet, when you can read the letter, that's the direction it needs to be laid down. So this, I'm going to take the previous one off, so button towards me and off. I'm going to put it down that way. Before I start doing a buttonhole, I'm going to put fabric under the foot and put the foot down. And I'm going to needle down and needle up. And then I lift the foot and pull that fabric out. And all that does is get my threads through the buttonhole foot. I need to now put the needle into the end of that buttonhole. And I've got to be on the buttonhole, so I need to move back to part one of the buttonhole and I'm going to shorten that a little bit because I know from when I did the decorative stitch it was a bit longer than I wanted it to be. So there's my picture of my buttonhole, how long I want it to be. I need to get that buttonhole in the middle of the foot and have the f machine set to do part one of a buttonhole. When I get to this end, I need to move to part two of the buttonhole and do about five or six stitches. Then 
then I go to part three of the buttonhole and this will do the backwards bit on the right and when I get to the back of it I go to part four which is the same as part two out to the back and cut off now in this particular case the tension on the machine has not been perfect it's actually better on the back than it is on the front and of course it's obvious because we've got two different colors in the thread it would not be obvious if you had the same thread top and bottom next I want you to notice that we have width and length and those as they are in the gray bit here relate to the stitches on the top but there's a bunch of other stitches on the bottom to get them to work you need to move the length into the stretch stitch area and that's pink and they are pink I currently have the three step zigzag selected I've got my length on one my width on five I just got that top one the pink stitch underneath it looks like a lattice and to get that lattice I need to move my stitch length down to this pink area where it says stretch stitch and there we go it's now down there so the remainder of this line I'll show you what it does it started doing a backwards and forwards motion which is why it turned from this into the lattice it's the same with all of these stitches so if we go back over to a straight stitch but we're on the stretch stitch so that's with it on the stretch stitch I'll move it back on to regular length And you can see there's quite a lot more stitching in there every stitch is actually done three times normal stitching they each get done just once what does the stretch stitch do when you're in the normal length zone you're just moving forward 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 when you're in that stretch stitch area you're going forward back forward forward back forward forward back forward that means that on a straight stitch each stitch is getting done three times Believe me, you really don't want to be unpicking that. It's not much fun. On the other hand, it does give it a bit of security for stretchy fabrics. There is a bit of give in it. The three-step zigzag, which becomes the lattice, that's quite handy for putting elastic on things. If you have one of these machines and you want to do free motion quilting, this is the part that came with the machine for doing that and most machines we have nowadays the feed dogs will have somewhere being dropped this machine instead of dropping the feed dogs essentially the little lugs here fit into the holes and it raises the plate so that the feed dogs are not engaged anymore so that's how you do free motion with these machines it's raising the plate rather than dropping the feed dogs the Janome my style 20 is quite an elderly machine now but it's still functional and we still see lots of them that come to be serviced the problems you're really likely to face at this point those little plastic bits around the spool pins can disintegrate just with age and also the difficulties we sometimes have with the reverse key the machines are often still functioning very well once again a big thank you to Susan 
for letting me do this demonstration on her machine. See you next time.